Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 6. We've got a lot of stuff to cover this uh, particular chapter and so we need to get going pretty quick. We're in uh, Adobe Bridge right now and you see the four images that we have to work on in this particular chapter and uh, the wagons is first but notice it says wagons.cr2 that's a camera raw file from a Canon camera we're just going to double click it and it's going to open up in camera raw by default it's got to go there so there's so many great things in camera raw that we can do to an image before we ever get into Photoshop as a matter of fact a lot of things could be done here and we don't even need to bring it into Photoshop we can adjust them here click on save image and move on uh, we're going to hit on all these goodies up here in the top and there's several things right in here that we're going to look at over at the panel so let's just start uh, obviously the the hand is to be able to move things around the image we can click this to get a white balance of course in this image it's going to be a little bit tough to find something that's white to click on so if we we click up here you know you can click anywhere in the image it's going to change trying to find uh, where the white balance should be but we don't have a good white in here so it's not going to do us much good a lot of times this doesn't give us an ideal but it is kind of neat to click on and it see the different versions it gives us so we've kind of messed up the image a little bit so all we have to do is go down here at the bottom of the uh, camera off and hold down the alt key that would be the option key on a Macintosh and it turns into reset so we just click the reset and it goes back to where we want it to be so white point can be handy if, as long as you've got some good whites and blacks in the image uh, right next door to it is the color sampler so you can click in here and get an exact reading uh, and drop targets as you see here but it shows you here's the first target we dropped in the exact RGB readings and there's second and so forth so you can clear that real quick and next to the uh, color sampler we have the targeted adjustment tool we can basically click anywhere in the image we want to if we click and drag upwards you see it lightens the image if we click and drag down it darkens the image so you can kind of play with it and see how it works best for you don't go too far either direction and I think that's got a decent balance to it uh, the crop works a little bit differently in camera raw than it does inside of Photoshop you click on it it's the traditional crop tool where we just drop it and you don't see the the uh, thirds set up in here we can uh, click and drag it anywhere we want to and we can drag, drag this just freehand if we hold down the shift key and drag it it keeps perspective so pretty much uh, what we've had in the old Photoshop but inside of Photoshop now we've got the new rule of the third set up so to speak and lots of other things that we can do straighten the image and all that this is this is nice we can just hit escape to get back out of that then next we have this straighten tool in here so we can actually click and draw a line and obviously that's just for an example that's what it's going to do so I'm just going to hit escape so if we wanted if we had something in here that showed us that we're leaning over or whatever we can quickly straighten it with that this the spot removal tool is pretty cool uh, it doesn't compare let's say to Lightroom 5 but it still is very helpful let's uh, I'm gonna hold down my control key that'd be command key on a Mac hold down my space bar and I'm just gonna click a few times right in here so you can see this tool in action uh, if I want to uh, let's say 
heal this hole right here. You'd need to click right in the center of it and then just let go. And what it does is finds its own sample point. Well, yeah, it fixed it, but it copied another hole. That's what the green is, is where it copied from. So if I click here, for example, it's looking over here in the wood. It changed the color and everything, the light and shadows, but the texture you see is wood. So it's kind of an interesting effect. Now, there we get a good clean shot at it. I'm going to hold down the Alt key, Option key on a Mac, hit this reset over here in the bottom right, and show you right in here, it says Type, Heal. That's what we had on here. It's just like the healing tool inside of Photoshop. We just don't have a lot of control over it. But if we drop that down to Clone and hold down our Alt key, Actually, we don't need the Alt key. We can just drag down on that. You see it, it behaves differently. So we can have a little more control. The problem is that it doesn't study light and shadow or analyze light and shadow like the healing tool does. But for little objects, uh, this particular tool can do well, and sometimes it's very bizarre. All right, let's once again... Alt reset, option reset on a Mac. Red eye, we don't really need that for this image, but if uh, if we had a, a person in here with red eyes, you basically click that tool and you draw a selection around the pupil and let go, and you notice it gave me a warning, this, this won't work here. All right, so the red tool is effective, and you can draw it over and over and over. If it doesn't get rid of the red the first time, you just make another click and drag selection, and, and it will work. All right, here is a biggie. This is really um, major. This particular tool is the adjustment tool, and it really can change the image. I'm going to hold down my control key and just do a minus a few times. That'd be command minus on a Mac and then a com command or control plus to make it a little bit bigger. I'm having a hard time. Control zero will fill the screen. That's what I meant to do in the first place. All right, before we actually use this tool and you get blown away by it, let me just show you some of the controls that are over here. Because this is a camera raw file, uh, there's different things in here than we've possibly seen in the past. Like I've got mine set up where JPEGs will come into Camera Raw. And we can do that right here. We can change our preferences on Camera Raw. If we just click this right here, you can see that I can set this up by automatically open all supported JPEGs and the same thing with TIFF. So anytime I open a TIFF or a JPEG, it will open in Camera Raw if that's what I want it to do. And you see the other things that are here. I'm going to cancel that because right now I don't want those things happening. I will, once I'm done with some of the videos, I'll probably turn that back on. I'm going to cancel that for now. And so if I'm working on a JPEG in, in here, I'm not going to have, for instance, if I go in here, let me just click on one of the other tools, just a hand tool. Uh, white balance. For example, there's only going to be three choices here if this is a JPEG. Uh, but as a camera raw file, <clears throat> excuse me, you see we have lots of things that we can try. As shot, auto, didn't change it much. Daylight, cloudy, brings in a little more warmth. Shade, Tungsten. So you just have to try these out. Obviously, some of these are horrible. If these weren't indoors, you could certainly have more luck with that with a flash. And Custom. I'm just going to leave it on Custom for now, and then I'm going to jump over here to where the little camera icon is. This is called Camera Calibration. We just click on that, and right under Camera Profile are some more choices. So we can do Camera Faithful. 
landscape, neutral, portrait, and standard. Now, a lot of times I find that portrait works very nice because it seems to have a little more clarity to it. Not always, but sometimes. So these can be some good starting point things, and you can also uh, tweak all of these colors that are in here. So you have so much control over your image. Now we can go back over here to basic again, and in basic we can go in here and change uh, all of the settings. Let me make this smaller. I'm going to do a Control Zero, Command Zero on a Mac, and we can you know really tweak the image. We can change the exposure, build, bump up the contrast if we need to. I like my images to be a little more contrasty anyway. Uh, we can make things show up that are in the shadows. If you look at the undercarriage, when I drag this up, here it was uh, neutral basically, and we can make more shadows. So we can really open things up with the shadow slider. Whites, we can bump those up a little bit or lower them. Uh, blacks, to make the blacks more rich. And you kind of get this blue that comes in here. That's kind of a warning that you're just, you know, losing everything. Going to solid black. No, no detail left. Then down here, we have clarity, which kind of builds a little contrast, can sharpen things up just a little bit, uh, and then vibrance. Vibrance will bump the color, uh, just like the word says, it makes things more vibrant. Now the things that are already vibrant and colorful and saturated, it really has little to no effect on it, but the things that are not very colorful, it really will bump them up. As you can see, if I take that way over, it introduces a lot of color. So sometimes it's it's nice to add just a little bit of vibrance. It really can make an image uh, pop. Then saturation uh, really usually can, you know, just make your colors garish. So be careful with, with it. Again, if you go too far, uh, you don't like what you've got, you can always do Control-Alt-Z to go backwards or command option Z on a Macintosh and you can go back a long way if you've made some mistakes or you can just do the alt reset down here at the bottom right option reset on the Macintosh now a really really cool feature in camera raw is right here this is the adjustment brush we can go in here and really work on individual parts of our image. Now, this image uh, may not be the most ideal to show this particular thing off, but it certainly uh, will show it. So if I, let's just say I'm going to and make sure that new is selected over here, and then you just paint. Now, don't be discouraged about the color. That's right here. Now, I'm not affecting the color anywhere else in the image, if you notice. It's just where I painted. Now, my main thing was I wanted to make that a little bit darker there. Because I want to see, I want to concentrate more on this than back here. So if I paint back over here a little bit, that's, you know, a little less noticeable. If we want to kind of back off on that, Right here at the top is the erase, and, and we can just come in here and touch that up a little bit. So now you see there is a little delineation between this board on the wagon and this board back here. It builds a little more depth uh, as long as we don't affect and make shadows where there probably shouldn't be any. We can also come down here at the bottom in the grass Let's go up here at the top, click on New, so we can add another kind of layer. We'll paint down here. Don't worry, that's dark. And let me show you something. Down here at the bottom, if we click on Show Mask, that's what that is. We just painted a mask in. So I'm going to undo that. 
the mask is still there we just can't see it and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to uh, bring my exposure back up because I don't want the grass particularly dark but I can make it more green so I can go down here to uh, clarity make that a little better maybe even run saturation see got to be careful because saturations want to put a little yellow in let's go back up here now we got a lot more green to it if we do a preview see what a difference it made in the grass and if we don't like you know if we've gone too far with that we can erase part of this let me left bracket key and we'll just paint some of that away so just this grass here in the foreground has the greener effect on it if we want to saturate this background back here where the tree line is we can click on new and paint again back here again we don't have to worry about the color that we just did we can change it to whatever we want and maybe here would be a good place to saturate I think that helps a little bit uh, maybe the clarity no the clarity is not having a lot of effect see what the exposure does it really lightens it up and again we can click on erase and get get that kind of white fringe there to go away so let's do the preview again we've made some pretty dramatic changes to the image right well we're not done right next door and we can have lots of these pins drop we can go back and change the grass by just clicking on this pin and we can edit that we can just add the yellow get rid of the yellow so forth uh, if I want to go back to the tree line, I can click that pin. The wagon, click that pin. So it's still all very editable on the fly, fast reaction. It's really, really great. But what about if I want to drop a gradient on this? Uh, used to be, and not so much anymore, a lot of photographers would put filters on their cameras when they went out to do their photographs. Uh, sometimes it was just a neutral density so they could allow slower shutter speeds and you know sometimes red filters especially black and white images they use red for uh, to build up contrast and so forth uh, but movies and uh, all kinds of things have lots of uh, filters run on them so right here next to the uh, adjustment brush is the graduated filter so if we click that you uh, you see we've got lots of things still in here that we can do with with the image with the graduated filter now if I click up here at the top and drag down now it's easy for this thing to turn and get wacky so if you hold down the shift key it'll come down straight and then just let go now remember this is also very editable but all the things that we can do now with this graduated filter see what's happening here well, let's go up with the exposure maybe a little bit and again we you know we can really change we can just warm the thing up if we want to we have lots of control over the way it's going to look and we can defringe a little bit now we don't have to be satisfied with that we can always get rid of it but what if we wanted to click on new and bring one up from the bottom again hold down the shift key and let go now it's got the same colors in it as the top does so what we need to do is adjust it separately and 
So you can see we've got some dramatic, if we click the preview, we have some dramatic changes in this. And we can always go back to the first filter and edit it or just take it back up a little bit. I'm holding down the shift key. You can bring it down further. So lots of control over that. Now I'm going to switch to another tool just so we can see the effect that we've got. Now remember, this blue down here, it doesn't mean that it's going to show blue. When we bring this over into Photoshop, that blue is going to be gone. It's just showing us that we've gone too far and the detail is lost right there. But this just should give you an example of the things that you can do with these particular tools. Uh, and then right up here is the uh, rotate to the left or counterclockwise and clockwise. Another very important thing is to go over here, this third little icon called detail. This allows us to sharpen things and also get rid of some noise. So I'm going to click right on that. And to be able to really see what's going on, we need to enlarge an area. So I'm going to do the old control space bar, click, and command space bar, click on a Mac. And we can now bring up the sharpening, bring up the radius. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Control space bar, click. So I want, want to really be able to see the detail. And that's command space bar, click. So if we run that down, you can see the difference in the sharpening there. The amount. And again, it's really easy to go too far. So this, you know, be careful. We want to see detail. I'm going to hold down the space bar and move around a little bit. Now, you see some grainy effects going on here as well. If we uh, move the luminance up a little bit, you notice that starts smoothing out. And we can bring the detail up and down. And luminance contrast. Color. Sometimes you got to wait just a second to make sure it's done its duty, so to speak. Now you don't want to go any further than you have to on luminance because it starts making everything uh, smooth out. Let's look at a preview. Look at the difference. I mean we've got a lot of nice uh, sharpening going on and getting rid of that noise. You can even see the noise in the wood going away. And let's zoom back out a little at a time. So I'm going to hold down the control key, command key on a Mac, and come out, look at our wood. Let's do the preview thing again. Looks good. Control minus or command minus again on the image. Let's begin. All right, I'm going to do a control zero, command zero on a Mac to fill the screen. And then if we're satisfied, I mean, our, I'm not crazy about this particular gradient in the sky, uh, but you see now how you can do it and make it happen for you. Let's just go ahead and click open image. So it opens it up in Photoshop for us. It's making all the changes to the file. So this is all in real time. And there's our new image. And a lot of times what I do uh, to an image is this. If I were going to print this, let's say, uh, a lot of times I'll do a control J to make a copy of that layer. And I will go to multiply. And then I'll run the opacity down a little bit. There's before and after. Not 
you know, you don't have to do that. It's just one of the things that I do a lot of times. And if we aren't happy with it, we want to go start all over or whatever. I'm just going to click on this and get rid of it. And I'm going to go back to bridge. Notice now in bridge, that's changed. I didn't do a save or anything, but it changed my image. And if you look right up here on this little icon, the thumbnail has an icon. If you right click on this, you go down to develop settings, go to clear settings, and that gets rid of that. We get back to our original image that way. So don't be concerned if you see that happen. It's not a big deal. We can easily make that go away. Okay, here's the next one to have some fun with, the Bollinger Mills. Let's just double click that, bring it into Photoshop, do a Command or Control Zero, fill our screen up with this image. Now, what we're going to do is do some selective uh, focusing or selective blurring, whichever way you want to look at it. If we go to Filter, down to Blur, right up here these top three really provide with uh, some creative uh, things that we can do. Let's go to Iris Blur. Notice right off the bat with the Iris Blur we can stretch this out. Basically it draws attention to whatever we place that center circle on. Everything else goes soft. And look over here on the right hand side in the panel. We can really make that go wild. We can also click and drag this circle inside to do the same thing. I kind of like dragging the slider a little bit more. I feel like I've got a little bit more control over it. Now, let's say we've got this one. Let's uh, let, notice if you want to make it smaller, just go over to the edge, not where these uh, dots are, because that'll make it so you want to turn it and you can turn it any way you want it. Let's move that up a little bit. If I click over here, I can create another one and let that little area show. Okay, and over here I can also make an area and if you grab that little dot and turn it, you can turn it into an oval. And then we'll just widen that a little bit. You see, you can move it anywhere you want to. And then go up here to the top and click OK. And you see the effects that we've got. Now, of course, I overdid it and some of these don't make sense. So let's do a control Z or command Z on a Mac and go back and visit that one more time. So we go down to blur, iris blur, and this would be the one uh, most commonly used is one right in the center. If we had a person right here um, and, and just really put their face or their whole length of their body in there, and then did a OK. You can see where that would draw the focus right into uh, the person. Kind of a glamour shot type thing. I know in the early days of my photography, uh, when I was doing weddings, I would actually take Vaseline and smear it on the outside filter uh, around the edges so just the center spot would be nice and clean. Another thing that we can do, I'm going to do another Control Z, Command Z on a Mac, uh, is make an exact copy of this, Control J to do that, J as in jump, and now go run the filter, filter, blur, iris blur, and I'm going to spin this again. 
and I'm going to go over here and click and just drag that out. I actually want to make that more of an oblong. Move that down. Let's let's spin that around again. It's half the fun. I mean, being creative, figuring out exactly where you want this thing to be. Write that in. And let's say that's okay. And we can turn off the preview to see what it did you know what it's doing for us and click OK now you see we've kinda of created a path going up here which isn't all bad and we've got this blur and let's just put a layer mask on this layer and now I can paint with my paintbrush or just press the letter B Make sure black is on top over in our color picker. And we can come over here with our opacity low, opacity. And let's make the brush bigger. And we can make the tree come back. And it gives it such a neat look as we gradually bring that back. So we can really blur the image up and have a really cool effect. There's also field blur. Now the field blur lets you uh, again drag that around and you get to determine you know just how much of a blur there is and this could actually be very effective if you're just creating background something to have behind other objects but you can also go over here and click again and bring that area back into focus okay you can go back to this one and make it even blurrier you can come down here and create another one and make it even cleaner or blurrier so you have awesome control over what gets blurred now let's cancel that and then go up to filter blur tilt shift whole nother ball game so we have parallel parallel uh, ways of maneuvering the blur so we can just have it in the sky so to speak and click OK and you see the effect of that let's control Z that command Z on a Mac go back again and we can create more and affect that area right here so it's, it's really cool how we can control we're sharpening that up and blurring everything else so the first one is the blur here and this one gives us a sharp area and makes the other more blurry. Some more to experiment with. I think this has a nice look and feel to it. But uh, you're the one that gets to experiment with all these things and, and see what they can do for you. Okay, hopefully you remember the uh, image of Philip from the last chapter. I'm going to knock him out real quick and do something different with him this time. So I'm going to go over to the Quick Selection tool make my brush size or a little bit bigger here and then I'm gonna blow it up holding down my control key or command key on a Mac holding down the space bar and click and drag just make sure we get make my brush a little smaller with the left bracket key make sure I get everything in the image that should be there a little bit of hair right here 
Everything looks good there. A little bit there. Got to get this. Oops. And make that a little bit smaller. I'm doing an alt click there to get some of that. Option click on a Mac. And I think we've done okay. Now we need to do a, let me move that up a little bit. Need to do a refine edge, and you can see I'm going to zoom in again. Control, click a few times. Command, space bar, click, and let's uh, smooth that just a little. And then we're going to shift the edge in, and we could feather it just a tiny bit. And we can also paint over that if a little bit of that's showing. Let's switch to white. Go up here on the view and switch to white. Make sure. See, we went too far there. So let me click and hold this down. We don't want to lose his hair in the process. Now, if we're satisfied that we've got it about right, let me switch that back to black again. The hair is looking good. Back to white. And let's just uh, go down here where it says decontaminate. I like to always have that on. And then, and leave it at the default to 50, uh, new layer with layer mask and then click OK. You see now we've got this new layer and we've got Philip knocked out, kind of. Let's go and do a Control or Command on a Mac, zero, to fill the screen. Basically, Philip's still there if I right click on this and say disable the layer mask. You see, it's just masked. So I'm gonna enable that again. Uh, we don't really need to have the mask. We just need Philip in this case. So let's apply that. So if we right click on it and say apply, I know you can't see all that. Let's, let's move that over a little bit temporarily. And then we want to, uh, click right on the icon of the mask and say apply layer mask. And now you see Philip is on the image no background that checkerboard means it's transparent behind him if we turn that on of course we have the old layer we can just hit uh, the backspace key and get rid of that if we want to because this is all we want right now we're not going to put Philip on another background or a gradient by him or anything like that we're going to change uh, the position of Philip a little bit and here's how we're going to do that if you go to edit and down to puppet warp now this is called a frame it built that automatically because we had you know selected him knocked out the background and so forth uh, now we need to drop pins what we're going to do is make Phillips head move so I'm going to anchor him and we can click in here and set points Sometimes you have to click a few times to get the points to set. And basically right now what I'm doing is anchoring him. And we'll put one over here. And down here. And down here. Now if I put one at the back of his neck right there. And then hold down my Alt key or Option key on a Mac. It turns into this circle so if I move my mouse outside the circle I can tilt his head back and forth now to complete the transform we just hit this checkbox right up here at the top or you can click enter and you see now Phillips heads down if you want to do a control Z back and forth you see what we've done 
Now, if a person had their arms more out to the side, uh, so we had some space in them, we could actually make these arms go up and down and so forth. So it's a nice uh, little feature in case we want to change a person around. It's just to kind of show you that uh, we can have some control over different elements in our image. While we still have Philip handy, let's do one other thing. Let's change his hair color. Something we haven't done yet, right? So let's zoom in. And I'm doing the control, hold down the space bar, click and drag. That'd be command, space bar, click and drag on a Mac. We're going to go to, we're going to change the mode to this. First time we've done this, image, mode. We're going to go to CMYK. If you were taking uh, something to a uh, printing press outfit, uh, a lot of times they'll ask you for uh, separation, color separations. And that's what this is. Uh, CMYK uh, stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. K for black. And uh, it makes a four color separation. So if we just click on that and click OK for this, now we're going to work with channels for just a little bit. And right now, what we want is the black channel. We need to make a copy of it. So we just drag it down to this little new layer icon and make sure everything else is turned off we just want that so let's move this out of the way a little bit and now we're going to bring up levels so hold down the control key and press the letter L as in Lima and that brings up our levels so let's bring this left slider this is the black side remember all the blacks reside over here the whites reside on the right side middle gray in the middle. Let's just bring this over and bring the whites over and really that's pretty good right there. What we want is the nice blacks up here in the hair because all we're doing is selecting his hair. So what we need to do is paint because this is like a mask now we're going to paint with black right in here actually let me undo that control Z we want to paint with white at a hundred percent and I'm going to change this to a harder brush run that hardness all the way to the right make my brush size smaller with the left bracket key switch to white and paint and just want to make everything else but the hair go away. And go up here. Get rid of that. And let's make his body come to life here to bring it into the picture. And we're going to paint it out. Make my brush size bigger so I can get rid of that in a hurry. This is all we want again is that hair. So what I'm going to do now is drag this layer that contains only the hair down to these little marching ants right here. That loads that as a selection. Okay. Now we're going to move that out of the way. Come back over here to the layer and let's you see everything is selected basically except the hair. Because you see the marching ants all the way around the frame and the marching ants around the edge of his hair. So we can go to select and inverse. Now just the hair is selected. I'm going to zoom in again. Sorry about that. And now you see we've got a nice selection of the hair. It doesn't look perfect, but it's much better than what you think it is. And now we're going to go up to select and and just go down to refine edge and move this slider over just a little little bit let's try that in here and with his hair selected like this we can go into image adjustments use saturation and we can Tweaky's hair, color, 
I'm just actually going to darken it up a little bit. And click OK. And I'm going to hide the marching ants. And then let's go. There's the way it was. That's the way it is now. Not a huge difference. Obviously, we could have made his hair green, purple, and so forth. But our job as Photoshop artists is to enhance, make better uh, things. So hopefully, uh, that added a little something to his look. Let me back up here. That is... Um, you know, it's worth a try. It's worth experimenting with. I think Phil's hair looks great the way it was. But uh, we look for ways to fix things and make them even better in Photoshop. Sometimes we need to leave well enough alone. Other times we can make those changes. And a lot of, a lot of times the people that we're working these images for don't even realize that we enhanced things like the hair and so forth and they're just happy that it, it looks good okay and last but not least a carriage ride in Chicago let's just put some text down here and type in Chicago and let's move it over with the move tool now if you want to follow along uh, go to window and come down to 3D and you should have a window much like this one right here and first of all I need to make this a selection uh, actually no I'm gonna go with it just the way it is let's uh, complete that by clicking the move tool or the you know the checkbox that's up there and we'll go with uh, selected layer I want to do a 3D extrusion and so I'm just going to click on the create tool and now I can change the Chicago however I want to as far as perspective goes to try to get the most of the 3D effect out of it that I can and then I'm going to do something a little bit different I'm going to go down and actually let's create a a layer here and drop it down below and I'm just gonna fill that with white I can go to edit fill and go to white now click on the horse and buggy layer and I'm actually going to uh, change this layer so I'm gonna do the same thing again with the selected layer and that's the one that's highlighted uh, I'm gonna click create click on create and now I can rotate this and turn it into a box like shape I can you know turn it any way I want to but I want to kind of see the top a little bit maybe and then you see the white there let's zoom out a little bit controls minus or command minus and now you see the effect that we have and we could you know there's all kinds of ways that we can uh, use the 3d tool but I just wanted to kind of show that off really really quickly to end this video uh, there's a lot of fun to be had with the 3d tools in Photoshop well this wraps it all up for chapter 6 I hope you got something good out of this and are excited about experimenting with your own things. Talk to you all later.